Hi there, and welcome to another video of Made with Cables. My name is Mark, my handle on the forums is Andro, and today I'll be giving you an introduction to the Mesh Instance Op. This will be the first video in a part of an ongoing series. So, first of all, I'd like you to pause the video and just make what you see here. Great, let's get started. So, typically, when you want to generate a lot of instances of a geometry on the screen, you would use something like the random cluster op. So, I'm just going to insert that, and it now gives us a hundred cubes with a random position and a random rotation. So, this is a really cool op. And if we press F though, we see a lot of activity here. It's looping a hundred times, and this is mainly running on the CPU, which at one point can become a little bit inefficient with larger patches. So what's the mesh instance up? Basically, it allows you to process a lot of instances of a geometry on the GPU. And because GPUs are really good at parallel processing, it's way more suited to this task than the CPU. So we're going to just recreate the behavior of the random cluster op today with the mesh instance op and give you a kind of like basic introduction to the array ops inside of cables and what you can do with them. So let's get started. I'm going to get rid of the random cluster op. And in between, I'm going to add a trigger once up. Now I'll explain why in a moment. We'll grab this here. And we're going to grab the mesh instance up, draw the same mesh multiple times very quickly. I'm going to put it here. Now it expects a geometry, right? Because it needs to draw instances of a geometry to the screen. So I'm going to grab the cube and I'm going to plug that in here. Now you might think, why are we using trigger once? Well, once the mesh instance gets the geometry from cube one time, it doesn't need it anymore. So there's no point in continuously sending this data in because then mesh instance would have to recalculate the whole time, which kind of defeats the purpose of the op. So if I click here with reset, you can see it gets one pulse over there. So this is just an efficiency thing. We don't need to look at this anymore. So let's look at transform and just go through some basics here. We have this cube and every 3D object inside a 3D space has a position on the X axis, Y and Z. It also has the rotational value on X, Y and Z and there's one number for the scale. Now mesh instance works the same way. Positions, scale, rotation. So let's go over here and make a random array 3X up. Don't let arrays uh, intimidate you if this is your first time using them. It will become really clear after a while. So I'm going to put the number of values on 3. This now gives us a length of 9, 9 numbers in the array. Let's just click this magnifying glass to inspect the contents of the array. It's an X, Y, Z array, right? So this is like X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z, and it just carries on. So for each instance we're going to make, we're now generating a random X, Y, Z position. So let's just grab this output and let's put it on positions. Zoom out a little bit. Let's put the number of values on, say, 20, and let's put the minimum on minus 5 and 5. And as you can see, we've got something coming close to the random cluster up. Let's put it on 100 for that busyness, and there we go. We've just generated a hundred random positions of X, Y, Z data. Okay, so that array is just creating instances here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create um, the rotational data, right? So let's put this on minus one and one. Okay, and let's backtrack a bit and let's grab the array multiply up. Multiply every number in an array. So grab that. So this is X, Y, Z data, right? So if I increase this number, we get the same behavior as um, altering the minimum and maximum here on random cluster. Okay, so I'm going to put this on five. So this is the array multiply up. We have um, mathematical, mathematical operators for all the parts of an array. Array multiply, subtract, sum, divide, and you can just put an array in and give them a number and they'll do their thing. But this is the simplest one to see. So let's grab this and just plug it into rotations because uh, positions is X, Y, Z data. And rotations is X, Y, Z data. So um, we can apply the same thing now with the rotational data. So they're not rotating because they're only moving one degree. So let's go here and grab the array multiply up. And we're going to grab that and put it here. And we're going to call this array multiply pos for position and this one. ROT for rotation, 
And if I now crank this number up, we can see that all the values are now getting multiplied. So let's put it on 360. And voila, we've got pretty much the same effect as the random cluster op. Let's jump in the patch, press F. And as you can see, we've got um, a really like not busy patch. It's not going through uh, 100 iterations with the mesh instance because it's all running on the GPU. So let's press F. So far, so good. So the last thing we now need to do is scale. So let's go over here and just create an array op. Um, so if we add the array op and we have it on 100 and we have a default value, let's just like put this on one. Now, what's happening here is a little bit confusing for beginners um, when they start out with this. So each cube needs an XYZ position and XYZ rotation um, numbers, but it only needs one number for the scale. So let's go over here and grab the array length op, okay? And basically, we wanna get this value, and it gives us the length of an array, right? So here, the length of the array is 300, and he says, length 300. But then we need to divide this by three. Because we only want one number per instance. If this is confusing, don't worry about it. It doesn't get much more complicated than this. And there's a reason for this later on when you're going to be trying different things out with different ops. Sometimes you're going to get a warning because it's going to say your arrays have to have the same length. So by using this array length here, we can use it to decide the length of all the other array operators when we change this. So I'll just show you that now um, a little bit more in action. So I'm just going to make a random array. And this generates an array of random numbers. It's not like 3x. So now I'm going to get this. I'm going to plug it into num values, and I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to put it here. And as you can now see, we're generating a random number per instance for the scale. So I can bring up the minimum, I can increase the maximum, and I can change the seed. So this is a really, really simple thing to do. So arrays have to match with their length, okay? So now let's go into something else. It's a little concept. Um, which uh, might be a little bit difficult to wrap your head around at the beginning, but once again, it's really easy once you get the hang of it. Let's grab the array, unpack free op. Splits an XYZ array into three individual arrays. Let's put that here. And now let's click in between and grab the array, pack free op. So I'm just gonna do this. So this is the X array, the Y array, and the Z array. That's the easiest way of explaining it. It needs a trigger. As you can see, we now have everything back the way it was. Why are we doing this? Well, you saw what we did before with multiply, for example, like here. Well, this multiplied the X, Y, Z components of the array. Now we can just do it on one single part of the array. So I'm gonna grab array multiply, and now I'm just gonna change it on the X axis, right? So I'm just trying to show you here that you can use this and you can just basically um, extract any part of the XYZ array and change it as you want. And we can go really wild here. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go here and now I'm gonna grab array sin. Perform a sin or cause operation on the contents of an array. And I'm gonna grab it. Actually, it needs to be before the multiply. There we go. And if I now move phase, as you can see, we get this. And I'm now gonna use amplitude. And if you look, we can now get this really kind of cool animated motion, right? So we can animate this now by just grabbing a timer two up. And we can plug this into phase. Once again, this is all working only on the X component. You can uh, select a couple of ops and give them a, a color code if you want so that you know what um, part of the array that they're working on. So this is like just to show you that you can just like extract one part of an array and you can start going crazy with operations that you can do and it's generate some really interesting results. So I could grab this as well now and I could put this for example on the Y component and I can now put this on a different frequency and I can put it on a slightly different amplitude. And as you can see, we're now generating some really interesting movement there with the shapes. So I could also go to the rotational data, and this is the XYZ data, and I could grab array sum. I'm just trying to introduce it to some of the tricks, so don't worry if you don't remember it all. And I'm now gonna add a timer two to this. 
and put it on 10. Let's put it on 20 even. And as you can see, we're now making all of the cubes rotate on the X, Y, Z axis and they're moving around. Let's just get rid of the multiply, multiply, because we've also got amplitude built in to sin. I forgot to show that, and it kind of gives the same behavior. So as you can see, this is just like a really great way to just like start playing around with arrays inside of cables. Don't let the array um, ops uh, intimidate you. There's a lot of them, but at one point you'll become very familiar with them in their operations, and it's going to become really quick and easy to do this kind of stuff in no time. So this is an introduction to the mesh instancer op and the basic arrays inside of cables. I hope this video has been educational and informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them under the video below or to post them on the forum. Thanks for your time, and see you in the next video. Bye.